possible that that fixed it. Anyway, um, uh, you need to go full screen. Yeah, I do. Uh, but I, I'm not going to for a minute because I'm going to show my list in combo chamber. You can show it on the li list thing. <laughs> You're right. You okay. gotta show off all those cool features that we have. Yeah, that's fair. Alright, anyway. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the actual beginning of this stream. Um, I just realized that it never reset the, uh... The, uh, the, um... Caster name. Caster names, or anything. <laughs> which is fine, because I will just remove those for a moment. Uh, so, as any longtime Switch viewer knows, the best part of any stream is watching the technical difficulties at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you're all here to watch, right? Um, anyway, so, what we're showing off tonight is a new War Machine format that we have been working on. Um, it's called Brawl Machine at the moment, although I'm still working on getting that to be Small Machine because I like yeah. it better. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Brawl Machine or Small Machine, we haven't decided. Yep. And uh, essentially, what this is, is it's a small points value tournament packet that we're developing. Um, this is completely independent of Privateer Press. This is just us uh, doing our thing. Um, and so, oh, this is the reason I wanted full screen, is because I was going to go over it first. Mmm, okay. Yeah. So, I think I will probably swap over to my uh, show notes list here in a second. Uh, but, basically, it's a small points format for people to play. And the goal is to be a viable um, tournament format and also a viable uh, new player format. Because new players have a lot to learn already. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, and so the goal, the goal is um, we, we really loved... Well, so when they announced Company of Iron, what we really wanted was, uh, a, you know, a quick way to play War Machine games in less than like an hour or something, mm -hmm. and a way to get new players ramped up. Yep. They also they also introduced uh, what was it called Rampage? Um, uh, Rumble, I think. Rumble, that's right. Um, and uh, again, we're like, oh, awesome! It's another way to get quick games of War Machine that will teach you how to play. And in both times, we were frustrated because. Um, they, uh, they, they would, uh, they introduced new rules or changed the games in some fundamental way yep. that ki kind of made it hard to like learn War Machine that way, and also makes it hard for veterans to pick it up, right? Because they got to learn new rules and things that aren't helpful in real games. Right. So the design, so the goal here is to make a quicker format that can be used to teach new players because it'll have fewer models, but it still has, as you can see, the steamroller rules. It's a strict cut down. Yep. Meaning that we're only removing things from Steamroller. We're not we're not going to add any new rules whatsoever. Correct. And we're trying to remove as few things as possible. Um, Although I just thought of a new rule we added. <laughs> well, I'm not sure we'll get to it. Sure. So I'm going to go over my uh, my doc here. Uh, there's some things on here that Brett hasn't seen because I've been playtesting it a lot more than he has. And uh, Chandler and I have been tinkering with this a little bit. So, uh, the terrain, kill box, and scoring elements are all the same as Steamroller Packet. Um, this means we're, that... We're go. planning on not doing objectives, right? Cause we're not planning on doing objectives, yes. Yeah. Because um, we don't we don't want to do, like, the choose an objective. We just think that stuff's not worth it to new players. It, it's also important that that's not a thing, because this is a format, which we'll get to in a second, but you win, by, when, you win when you have three more than your opponent. Um, and if you have a, a objective, it's really easy to win on one turn. Mm-hmm. So, That's good. but those uh, the train rules, the kill box rules, and the rules of the scoring elements that we do have are all uh, the same as the steam roller packet. So there's that. This is a 25 point format. Uh, no more than that. So this is uh, one requisition slot, and theme forces are very much allowed and encouraged. The big thing, one of the big things we're changing at that is that everything is FA1, um, and this has been a big deal. Uh, it's really changed the way I've been building lists. Uh, it is, and I have it's been really odd. Um, FAC isn't different than FA1, right? Technically, all the characters are still FAC. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it it's really odd in list building, um, especially because you only have the one requisition point. So you normally you're like, okay, I'll put in two stone shapers. Like, oh no, that's illegal. <laughs> yep. 
So you can still bring one stone shaper for a requisition point, but it's probably better to use it on something else. Yeah. But this is important for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, if it wasn't here, you could just like put f uh, five marauders, four marauders in a list and laugh. Um, um, yeah, I would, I would go to um, triple negation angel. Would be really hard to beat. Yeah, triple negation angel would be a problem. Initiates. Um, initiates, three units of initiates would just be actually the worst. Yeah. Uh, one unit of initiates, surprisingly, not so bad. Um, oh, cool. Three, pretty pretty atrocious. Yeah. But one, not so bad. Um, once you kill the first one, which is not that hard, they are real, real manageable, and they do not kill things very well. So, yep. So, uh, a casual format tournament, if you're going to play in this format, and these numbers are all subject to change, because we are developing this as we go. This has been in development for about a month at this point, and uh, we're going to launch the beta, I guess, probably tomorrow, since this is out there now. <laughs> um, so the casual format tournaments would be played with a 35-minute clock per player, or, since this is aimed at new players, your TO has the discretion to say, no clocks at all. This is a fast format no matter what you do, so clocks aren't as important. Now, on the competitive side of things, and this is this is where we're really excited, uh, this is a format that we think can be played with double elimination or best of three and stay inside the time limits that we already have for Steamroller. Um, this is and, a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and so the huge advantage here is, right, it, if um, more games are played, this lessens the impact of, like, list selection and... Mm -hmm and like list advantage right um this is this is the whole reason why magic the gathering works uh there are some decks that just flat beat other ones and it's a it's a one list format right yep but um because it's best of three and because they allow you to adjust in between games um either we'll try and imitate that if we can manage three games in an hour or we'll do double elimination which is another way to mitigate that um it it's really cool it also means that um games are a lot shorter and games are a lot more um decisive uh, by action um, mm -hmm. and it's and between FA1 and smaller point values it's way easier to get into yeah like I've been looking at lists for this format because I've played quite a few at this point that I'm like wow this is really fun and it's like oh this is a very cheap investment comparatively it's like $75 and I've got the whole thing yeah but it, like one of my lists is three heavies and a solo and a caster one of my lists is two heavies a caster you know and then six other models yep yeah, so it's, it's very inexpensive. So these will be played on 25 minute per player clocks. Um, if you think about it, we play on 60 minute clocks for 75 points. So dropping to 25 points and going down by like, you know, slightly less than, slight, like about 40% clock time is, is about right. Um, with this in place, that means that you could play three rounds and in the space of like one and a bit regular steamroller rounds. Uh, Gonzo, we are talking about uh, Brawl Machine, which is a new steamroller or a new tournament format that we are testing out and um, hoping to propagate out into the world. Um, so, win conditions here are assassination and then having more than three, three more C CPs than your opponent instead of five more. Uh, we tried it with five more one game and it was miserable. Um, <laughs> it was really, really bad. Uh, basically, one person had their Warcaster left and the other person had like three things left and the workouts are just kind of doing enough. Uh, you can also win on, like have more control points than your opponent at the end of turn five. The game's end on turn five. Oops, deleted that. Uh, instead of on turn uh, seven, because if you go to turn seven, there is actually nothing left. And then tiebreakers <laughs> are the same as a steamroller. Um, so. Although if we can get best of three format, we can improve strength schedule into opponent win percentage, which is much, much better. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is a placeholder. If we can make uh, best of three happen, that will get erased. Um, yeah. So those are the easy things to talk about. And now we're going to get to the controversial bit that we're going to get a ton <laughs> of blowback for. But we're ready for it, probably. Oh, wow. You promoted some field of band lists without being awesome. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I, I've, I've I, played some am, games against myself and against other people, and some of these are not okay. I, wait, let's see if I'm playing anything on the ban list right now. Uh, I don't know. No, I'm good. Woo! Okay, so <laughs> the ban list for Brawl Machine is all huge base models. The reason for this is, if you look at the scenario here... Um, and and my plan is when we do sorry uh, when we do release this ban list we're gonna have a very long explanation going over all these things uh, yeah. kind of like you see in the MTG banded and uh, restricted yeah, format there will be a paragraph of explanation for why yeah but if you look at this scenario 
Um, this flag is about four inches away from this zone. These zones are only six inches apart, and then this flag is, like a huge base model could very easily contest either zone and the flag at the same time, um, which is horrifically bad for that. And we're also thinking about moving this rectangular zone to the, to the middle of the table about an inch. If we did that, a huge base could contest three, three elements. elements. Uh, yeah, which is just <laughs> bad. Also, um, huge bases are expensive, and they're really, really, really not fun for new players when it's like, oh, you've got that huge thing. Um, so, you know, there's that. Um, casters with telekinesis. Oh, well, uh, I, I want to say um, the other huge advantage uh, of not having huge bases is it means that you you aren't strictly required to have nutrition win. So one problem with small small point formats mm -hmm. is that if you have a really beefy caster and a colossal, often the way the game will go is they put everything into the colossal and then the caster just wipes out if they do manage to kill it. Yep. Um, or you have like an armor buff or something and it can't and, and it can't go. So yep. the the advantage now in addition to not having to teach stuff like huge base rules, like you know how do they interact with line of sight, how do they interact with terrain, how do they all that stuff. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you also make it so that um, throws and stuff are much more effective in winning scenario. Yes, yeah, true. That's I think I think that's a really important way to teach. Um, you know, like here's how scenario works. Here's how you can get out of a bad situation. Like this is what makes War Machine great. Yeah. However, it does come with a downside. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so no huge bases. Now, that's not as controversial as the next things that we're going to get into, but I, that's well, just so, Sorry, I was trying to segue into the next okay. one. So, so because there's no is, huge bases, all Kruger 2 has to go. are banned <laughs> because yeah. uh, huge bases are one of their checks. And also, telekinesis is an insanely powerful spell when it's influencing 10 to 15 points out of a 75-point list. When it's influencing 10 to 15 points out of a 25-point list, it is actually the end of the world. Um, so they're just flat out banned. Uh, and it all, it's also important to note that um, this specifically hits Kruger 2 and Haley 2, who are just devastating at low point format. Correct. And then it also unfortunately catches like... Scavarus. Sc Scavarus, <laughs> Sturm and Drang, Ron. Um, <laughs> I swear I'm forgetting one. But, yeah, you know, Ron, Ron was on the watch list, so I don't care about that. Yeah, Ron so, was on the watch list. Uh, right, we'll look at that in a second, sorry. So, yeah. Um... Anyway, that's the next okay. thing. Next up is Infernal Masters, and this is going to be probably the, the most outrage-inducing one, and the reason for this is because summoning is a very, very strong mechanic at 75 points, and at 25 points, it's pretty much impossible to deal with that level of attritional um, value. Yeah, Infernals would be rough in an interactive format, and Avoriel, um, we've been testing Thags 1. I've played into it twice. Uh, the problem with Thags 1 is that he has no threat extenders, and so what tends to happen is his beast dies, he brings it back, and then either Thags dies, or there's not enough on the side of the table that the beast is on, or there's too much of a tempo push already for it to be important. We're keeping yes. an eye on him. I don't... Oh, he should be on the watch list, actually. He should be on the watch list. Yeah, he, um, he's on our radar. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so it's very important to note that we are absolutely keeping an eye on all these things, and we like... Uh, point yeah you know, like and and yeah we we want it like i went i literally went through every model in the game and said is this something we should be paying yeah, attention Brent's to watch list is actually like 80 models long i've paired it down <laughs> to the ones i actually think are problems um but that's true yeah so infernal masters in general now that being said we will keep an eye on this and as things progress and the game changes i could see an argument for bringing back like maybe omadamos well but the thing is i i think i think Rengear hits it right on the head, is that new players already have trouble with Infernals. Yeah. And having them in this format would be a nightmare for yeah, them. I agree. Now, Hearts of Darkness uh, is a basically normal War Machine faction, and... Yeah, perfectly fine. That's perfectly um, fine. I had Regna on the watch list, I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm um, not either, I think she's fine. So the next on the ban list is Fiona. She's already ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, in 75 point levels, and she's even dumber at 25 point levels. Um, um, you'll note that Calandra is the is the survivor here um, of the telekinesis befuddle uh, casters. Yes. Um, and and I mean it's just because it's so much harder for her to apply it. Yeah, it's harder for her to apply it. She's also squishier, and she doesn't have Fiona's feet. Yeah, uh, which is very important. Um, 
Next up is Butcher 3. There's a lot of casters with Butcher 3 levels of output in the game, but there's not a lot of casters that can do Butcher 3 levels of output and then not be chargeable and also be full camp afterwards. Well, I actually think the devastating thing is the 5 inch pull. There's also that, yes. Um, right, if, you're, if you don't have huge bases, what do you literally? What do you do against him? You hope you have an unpushable thing. Yeah, you're playing dwarves. <laughs> yeah, or or you're playing exalted, maybe. What? So I I actually put all every model with a movable object I want to get rid of. But yeah, I don't I don't think we need to go that far. But yeah, yeah so Butcher Three is on the ban list because of his unique combination of movement and then survivability. Magnus Two is on the ban list because it's really really easy to kill the one or two contesting things, use his feet, and then just score three points and win. Um, yeah. I don't think that's a controversial pick at all. You, yeah, you'll, you'll notice that we are, rather than um, trying to design a scenario that will work for all of these, we're just going to take them out and fi yep. figure them out at 75 points. And again, we're trying to make this as small as possible, and I think we're doing yeah. a pretty good job here. This is like, what, 20 entries out of the 1,200 different uh, rule sets in the game. That's not bad. Uh, Scar 1 in small point levels, uh, I just don't think you have the damage output to deal with her, and you don't have the survivability to survive her. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she's bonkers in 75 points. She's probably she's way better in this. McBain is a weird one, but you're so strapped for um, support for support models that like have uh, like grievous wounds or anti healing or things like. It's really hard to justify bringing a void archon in this format because it's relatively easy to kill and it's a uh, like it's a third of your list so it's interesting archons have actually been really hard to bring in this uh are any of the starter box casters a problem on here i don't think so off the top of my head let me run through them real fast maddox is Stri fine striker one striker Sorcia one one and social ones social ones on the watch list those, those no. are those are old battle boxes yeah, old battle none, box. of, none of the new battle boxes are in here i don't think any of the new battle box casters are problems uh i'm trying to think yeah. beth is fine i i think it's really funny um that people were complaining about the uh yeah right uh like the battle box casters uh -huh. um and they kept complaining about Tanith, and I'm like, this is really funny because Tanith is by far the best of the Mark III Battle Box casters. <laughs> yeah, it's her, Kozlov. Yeah, yeah Cr Krissa getting redone might change that, but who knows. Um, Zakar I mean, is really yeah. good at low points, and you know what? That's fine. Zakar can have a format he's good in. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think the really cool thing is McBain will leave the ban list if we get if we introduce a sideboard format, right? Yeah, right? if we the, introduce a sideboard the... format, which we want to do... Um, yeah we will get rid of McBain off of this. Absolutely. He he is fine if you can bring in a Grievous Wounds option. Which is the first thing we, we would tell every new player to put inside for. Yep. <laughs> so next up is Arcadius. And um, yep. In retrospect, that's obvious. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to try and, and do something Arcadius adjacent tonight. And we'll see if that's enough to get Doom Shaper 2 banned. But yeah, you, you'll note that. Uh, so in this, this is an important thing I want to say before we start playing this game. Um, is that... Um, we are both going to be trying lists that possibly should be banned. So, like, don't don't take this as like if this game goes badly, we're really sorry. This isn't yeah, this supposed is, to be represented. This is a before. testing game, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stridge of Form, that's a great question. I think that's probably fine. I can't think of enough uh, places where summoning in a new thing outside of Infernals that uh, breaks FA would be a problem. We've gotten rid of Nemo for and the yeah. gate there in the well, so you can't do that and yep. yeah, yeah that's another cool thing about banning all huge bases it also catches all opening the gate yep all opening the gate so i think the pot being able to bring in a second mechano shredder is fine i don't have and, a problem with that and it's like the other one's uh thrall warriors from alexia probably fine well alexia 2 is on the watch list so oh she is yeah i've okay. played alexia 2 in three out of my t many testing games and she's okay. been an absolute monster every single one of them Okay. Um, the last model on the absolutely banned list is Asphyxius 4. Um, I'd like to point out that I said all Focus 5 casters, so... <laughs> yeah, sure. Rain Gear, yes, we are going to be posting this VOD tomorrow, and we'll also be posting this document tomorrow with a with an updated graphic. Um, and we, we are actually going to be making a space in our Discord for testing of this format, and we want people to, uh, to, to get on board with this. Our, our ultimate goal is to have... Um, LVO adopt this as a format that people can play. It's, um, yeah, probably so, not the primary one, but probably we'll not the primary one. But I would, um, I would love to have this be a thing out there. And and it, our plan is for it to be like very much a beta, where we release it to the Line Sight Discord, um, and you know, super fans check it out and kick the wheels and let us know how it went. Yeah. 
um, rather than you know a broad format where we're going to release to everyone. Because our our true nightmare is if we fuck up the ban list and forget something or ban something that shouldn't be, um, and people see the release and like, oh, it's a terrible format, and we and you know never talk about it again. Yeah, because that, that's really what we're scared of. Because I think this 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 type of format is something the game desperately needs, and um, I'm really really excited about its potential to bring new players into the game and also just as a format like my wife will not play war machine because getting up to 75 is too hard but she said she would actually be interested in learning how to play if the goal was 25 points yeah and it's also like just looking at my list right uh there's no duplicates it's like both my lists have um like both my lists happen to have getterx in it so like this beautiful centerpiece model right and then just a couple of other things in it yep so, yep, good questions. So Asphyxius Force banned because he's insane. Yeah, it's, it's fi- <laughs> Yeah, he absolutely needs to be. <laughs> yeah, he, he's way too survivable, does way too much. Uh, I mean, if we could organize our own con for Brawl Machine, we would. I mean, for online, sure. <laughs> uh, Tenzilla, two for one rec options are uh, not a thing. Screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I was building a list and I put in two stone shoes. Like, oh, this is a great the, list. The, only, oh, the no. only time I might make an exception for this is like Krabbits, and be- that's because you can't bring them in singletons. Well, no, that that is FA1. That is FA1? Okay, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. FA1, two Krabbits. All right, cool. Um, Tinsel, it's something we probably sh- should have thought about more. Uh, we like how it plays out um, yeah. in that it's screwed over two for one Rex. Um, but that, I mean, we're open to that, open to changing that. Yeah, and again, this is, this is point eight is maybe aggressive it's probably more like 0.7 or six but yeah so our watch list i'm going to go through these briefly and give explanations why hellmouth and sentry stone are both insanely um ridiculously they're- good on scenario they're super duper efficient they're self-sustaining and they're just a nightmare to play into for new players i've played into a hellmouth multiple times now and i've won those games but it's largely been off the back of like just running at the hellmouth as fast as i can and getting lucky so, yeah. We haven't played with Sentry Stones yet. I'm... Shit. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, 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 used to ha- I used to have one on my list, okay. so I took him out. Well, we don't. Um, Sev Zero is just really, really strong, although we I, I have noticed that buffing plus one on... Um, plus one on, like, ten things is not nearly as good as buffing plus one on, like, 25 or 30 things. Uh, especially since he's your only rec, so... Yeah, and he's, he's your acquisition point. Also, he's Squish, and he's bringing a Warjack, so by himself, he's a big percentage of your list, and if you kill him, and, and you'll probably be able to tell where he's going to be, it's on that flag. Um, he's he's pretty dead. Um, Alexia 2 is just an insane recursion engine. She's a massive value. She's very hard to kill. Harbinger's Feet and Harbinger's Martyrdom, with the lack of volume of attacks, are things that I'm concerned about. I actually plan on playing Harbinger quite a bit this week. She's like the thing I want to test. Um, Sorcia 1 is Sorcia 1. Her feat's ridiculously (laughs) good in this format, and uh, she has a personal assassination run that is very, very, very strong. Um, So Karchev is in the category I put for personal output and personal survivability. Um, Just because he is a heavy, right? And so we want to be careful with that. Yeah. Osram is a scenario... uh, problem because of bulldoze thank you dr glenn for for following sweet yeah barjan absolutely play um deployment to deployment is the same as steamroller it's the same player one displays at seven and player two deploys at 10 yeah we're, we're planning on keeping it as a 48 by 48 table so yeah. like yeah we'll talk about the scenario is what we get to right after this yeah. uh so karchev is on the watch list because he's you know karchev osram is on the watch list because he's got a ridiculous armor speed feat and he's got a really really good scenario out in just bulldozing everything out of the way Mm -hmm. Um, he also has really really strong support spells like fire for effect is already good in 75 points it's nuts in 25 snipe is very very strong Um, yeah he's he's just legitimately excellent Severius 2 is on this watch list and I think he's probably going to end up on the ban list because oracular vision on every model in your army Mm -hmm. is nuts and his feet when you only have like 5 or 6 models that he can just pick and do boosted damage rolls into from anywhere is a problem mm-hmm. and we also removed his greatest weakness because you can't take sevy zero anyways yep and then uh <laughs> thagrosh one is on the watch list just because his feet is is really strong wait However, you guys you guys were there <laughs> you, you watched him get on the watch list <laughs> yeah yep yeah so chandler and i have played that a couple of times uh both 
basically what ends up happening is I kill Typhon and then Dagrosh has to expose himself and Dagrosh gets murdered. But it's been it's been close. Anyway, we're planning on having uh Denny one She's on my watch list. Okay, she's on Brad's watch list. <laughs> I honestly thought um, she existed. So yeah, she'll probably be on yeah. the watch list. Um so I so like I had a bunch of like five or six categories of watch lists. One were assassins, just in general. So like Ron, Sloan, Denny One. Mm -hmm. Like because if it's if it's hard to keep your caster alive against these assassins at seventy five points, it I definitely want to test them at twenty five. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's a few more things on the watch list. Probably I didn't go through and copy down every single one of them because I put this together pretty quickly. Um, and then here is our first scenario. We're only going to show these off one at a time because we're testing them. We'll release them into beta. And then we will uh, move on to the next one in our internal testing and send the next one out to beta a few weeks later. And excuse my really crummily drawn in measurements. You just show, I mean, I guess the measurements. Yeah, but the help. measurements matter. Um, yeah. So there's a couple different things about this. First of all, is that this is uh, asymmetrical. Uh, second of all, is that there's one of each of the zones. So your, your battle group and your units are going to uh, both be important. And then the flags are offset. And this is. This is something that one of our playtesters noticed and has commented on that the top flag here is more powerful than the bottom flag because it gives you so much more control over the the circular zone. It's closer, like just numerically, it's closer. Mm. However, when I designed this scenario, I had that thought in mind. And one of the things that I was thinking about it was that this is a good way to teach the importance of second turn because this the one side of the scenario being ever so slightly stronger is a really good way to incentivize going second. So, things we're thinking about changing on this uh, are... Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, so, things we're changing about thinking about changing on this is this top flag goes over and is exactly opposite this bottom flag. Both flags go to the center line in the middle. Um, those are two variants that we want to explore. And then the, uh, the rectangular zone is going to be um, potentially moved in an inch or possibly two towards the center um, because getting out to the far side of it has been tricky uh, if there's just something sitting out there contesting. So this document will be going live probably tomorrow. I will have hopefully a much more professional looking graphic here uh, to post. Um, this one was thrown together for Brett and Chandler to see what we were talking about, and then I haven't had time to go back and update it since then, so we'll, uh, but we'll do But Wartable has a cool copy feature. Wartable does have now. a cool copy feature, and honestly, we might just get Lars to add this to, as a scenario that we can do. Well, out, I mean, once we leave beta. Yeah, once, once we put it in beta. So um, let's pick ourselves some terrain. So I'm going to load us a map here. Uh, boy, I'm just going to random. Cool. So we got rubble here wall wall forest this zone is real interesting um two clouds <laughs> a trench and then an obstruction right here and i need to add my lists so all right oops mm, hold on. that doesn't look right that doesn't look right what happened reset sorry there we go mine's good And you'll have to paste yours. Are you in sure? Again. Yeah, you're gonna have to paste yours in again because I had to reset it. Oh, you're brawl. I didn't know that. I'm machine. Wait, hold on. Okay, stop. <laughs> I'm brawl. I'm gonna be machine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have Balder. Okay, Balder two because of course, and Chromac two. I actually played your Chromac two list. It's pretty fun. Oh, oh, so it's not broken. Uh, I mean, so here's the thing. Um. Warp Wolves die to mediocre guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So, well, then I'll try Balder then. Okay. I'm going to. Jeez, I don't even know. I'm going to try Doom Shaper 2 because I want to see how this goes. Sure. All right. Cool. Uh, and this, you know, as we, as you know, uh, the hotkeys have been released. So. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go be brawl. Hotkeys are right here. Ooh, um, I rolled a one. Oh yeah, I need to do that. I'm machine. Start. I rolled a two. Uh, I would like to go first. Okay. 
So you said the top flag is generally better? The top flag seems like it would be better, yeah. Okay. Huh. Stream is buffering. Hold on. Let's see what I can do about that. Uh, increasing frequency. Interesting. Okay. Let me turn off a couple of things and see if that helps. Turn that off, turn that off, turn that off. 